message too well, right? Your account will be deactivated. It's not a good thing if it's the final notice, right? Which means you're off. And you may also notice that when they send you a threat, right? When they sort of like prepare you for deactivation, they will throw a number of reasons at you. They know which one you are violating. And again, it doesn't mean you're necessarily violating them because you're an independent contractor, right? In their world, you may be violating one of the few. So I w the, the reason why I want to make this video, and it's pretty damn simple, right? Pretty damn simple. Um, I have been leasing out vehicles to drivers for many years. I've seen drivers come. I've seen drivers go. I've seen the good ones stay. I've seen the reasons for the deactivation. I've handled over 2,300 cases of deactivations with this team, Gig Rocket, that I work with. And I want to pass on some advice. And it's, just, it's my opinion. And my opinion is based on the research of what I've seen over the years, talking to drivers, actually seeing the de data, seeing the reasons why they're deactivated. And what I've noticed is that Uber will ne always keep you in the dark and Lyft does it the same. They will not say, you got deactivated because, right? And at least if, 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 you, if, if they reach out to you and say, hey, you got deactivated because the, the rider said you were drunk or you were under the influence. Easy one to fight, right? Because you just go and get a blood test or an alcohol or a drug test and you take them on, right? And you will get your account back. The easiest one to get back. It's, it's, it's a very easy rider, false rider complaint, and it's a very easy one to prove if you are innocent. But here is where it gets tricky, right? So let's go, let, let's look at this. They say, um, if this illegitimate activity continues, right, your account will be deactivated. Shortly afterwards, this driver got deactivated because he did one of five things. Or maybe the driver knows what he did wrong, but Uber proceeded to deactivate him. But these are the type of threats that you will get. And they are very they, they're revealing in one way, it's either one of five things, but they're very vague in another way because you do not know why they deactivated you. Illegitimate activities are inconsistent with Uber's policies, right? They have these policies, they want you as the independent contractor to abide by these policies and terms and conditions. And here they say this may include activities tied to GPS manipulation, disabling your location, illegitimate cancellations, support abuse, or remaining online in queue for reasons other than accepting trips at an airport. Now, hear me out. The easiest place for Uber or Lyft to deactivate you is if you try and cause any shenanigans at the airport. They got you, right? And they have mastered, they have mastered their game on weeding out drivers, right? That are A, influencing other drivers, or gaming the system, or costing them money, or pissing off the airport authorities, or holding up the whole show at the airport, right? They do not want drivers sitting in queues or manipulating the queues. Uber and Lyft would prefer you to take every single trip that they serve on the platter and off you go. And here it is, and off you go. Just accept little man and off you go. But they are cherry pickers. They are smarter drivers. I know them in LA. I, I know the players by name. I know who is doing what, and I, I don't care. It is their deal, it is their money, it is their insurance, it is their car. They can do whatever they want, right? If they think they're gonna get away with it, or they think they're smarter than Uber, 
or many of them are smarter than Uber and Lyft, good for you. Go and make money, right? Now, I'm a huge fan of cherry picking. And I'm talking cherry picking outside of the airport because I believe the airport gets you into the most trouble. Dropping off, ladies and gentlemen, is an easy task, right? Oh, picking up in a neighborhood, taking a businessman to the airport or a family from a hotel to the airport, drop-offs at airport, easy money. But from the airport, the moment the individual has dropped off that customer, that rider at the airport, some try to get a little smart. And the reason why I say some is because I see that. I've had, at, at the max time, at 58 SUVs I was leasing out. Do the math. At $600 a week, a lot of money, right? And then sold a lot of these vehicles during the pandemic. Now I'm gearing back up again, right? And I, I work with different operators, and not just here in LA, also outside of LA, Texas, New Orleans, etc., Arizona. Now, here is where it gets tricky. GPS manipulation. If you do it, I don't know about it, right? A GPS manipulation, you will lose every single time. Why? Because they know exactly what cars are going on to the airport lots. They have all the cameras set up. They have everything there. They know what's going into that queue, onto that parking lot, right? And they take all of the number plates right now if you want and i've seen it i've seen the guys show me live if you want to manipulate the gps and be outside of the airport and not sit in that queue sort of like pretending okay i'm in that queue i'm manipulating my position being in that airport queue right but in fact i'm outside now uber and lyft know which which vehicles which, regist which registration plates are on the lot. And what they do is they just cross-reference. Okay, you say you're on the lot. We don't identify, we don't see you on the lot. However, you are spoofing GPS outside of the lot. Get it, right? And they catch you out a few times They just cross-reference who's on the lot, who's pretending to be on the lot, but is not on the lot. And they got you, right? And I had drivers drive under my fleet that lost their accounts, several of them in LA. Because I said, hey guys, it's up to you. If you wanna do it, good, don't get caught. But their ways of identifying GPS manipulation have gotten better and better and better over the years. I don't think that us drivers will outsmart Uber and Lyft when it comes to GPS manipulation. So if you get deactivated, over G GPS manipulation, guess what? They will not tell you, hey, because of GPS manipulation, we're warning you and you're out. No, they give you five reasons why you could have possibly been deactivated. Five reasons. You don't really know which one it is, but you know, okay, I engage in GPS manipulation. It's probably the first one. They got you, you done. They'll send you a warning. They'll see if lucky if they send you a second warning, you're out. Now, at Gig Rocket, when we have to fight a case like this, right? And you can even push it into small claims court arbitration. How are you going to win with your evidence on GPS manipulation? You lose. They can show you not on the lot, right? So I have seen this time and time again that people that want to engage in GPS manipulation you're off the platform, good luck getting back, and the, my team at, at, at Gig Rocket most likely will not be able to help you get back on because of GPS manipulation. Don't come to us if you are doing GPS manipulation. If it's working for you, if you are smarter than them, if you know a way, great, keep on doing so. None of my business, how you make your money, right? And again, I'll say like cherry picking all day long. Why? Because I'm an independent contractor. I decide, right? Oh yeah, that one I'm taking. That one, no, 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 no. Cherry pick that one. We are able to make those um, decisions. Now, this brings me to, I'm going to jump forward to illegitimate cancellations. They sneak this one in there. Illegitimate cancellations. How do they know if something is legitimately or illegitimately canceled, right? 
they just don't want you to cancel. That's why they throw that into the mix. This is a warning, right? You will get deactivated because it could be one of these five things, including illegitimate cancellations. What Uber is an illegitimate cancellation? If anybody knows what an illegitimate cancellation is, you, the independent contractor, should have the right any time of the day to cancel. I don't feel good with this group. I'm not going to make enough money here. I don't like the destination where this is going to. So sneaking in the verbiage, illegitimate cancellations, easy one to fight if they do uh, um, deactivate you. Because when you go into small claims court and say, hey, I lost $8,000 income, I as the independent contractor decide to cancel when I want, but they say I cannot do it, right? And the true definition of an independent contractor is that you dictate the terms, right? They'll supply the trip. You decide is the price right. You can actually even set the price as an independent contract. You can decide when you want to drive, where you want to drive. So this is pure manipulation of its finest when they say illegitimate cancellations. Now, disabling your location, disabling your location. I mean, what, what do they mean by that? What do they mean by that, right? you are disabling your location. If I'm disabling my location, it usually means, hey, I'm getting off Uber and I might be getting on Lyft. Or if I'm smart, I have two phones or two apps running and I decide who, you know, who gives me the first trip and the better trip and the better paying trip, right? So to throw, to throw that in the mix, it's just to confuse you at the end of the day. Here are multiple reasons why we will deactivate you. And then they did deactivate the next step. This was the final notice. And then I, and the person contacted me. I'm not going to reveal the name. They contacted me and said, hey, I got this. What do I do? And I said, listen, if you are engaging in any of these, right, which they deem to be unlawful against their terms, be, be a little bit more careful. Continued doing whatever he did and he got deactivated. When I said, what was it? Wouldn't let me know. So I did not represent this individual, this driver, trying to get them reactivated, right? But I'm trying to help you here, right? What I'm saying is airports, I believe, are not a good thing when it comes to, hey, I'm gonna jump back in the queue I know how to manipulate that queue. I may know how to spoof my location, right? I know how to game the airport. The punishment, ladies and gentlemen, the punishment is when you get busted, when the final straw, when they've made that final decision after the warning, as a result of these activities, you are no longer eligible to receive requests for pickups for pickups and drop-offs at airports. Ladies and gentlemen, the airports are your number one moneymaker, wrong or right, right? So you, you F up here, you screw up your drop-offs and your pickups from the airport because airport management doesn't like you doing shenanigans in the queue, right? They want it to flow, right? They are involved in the same money-making racket as Uber and Lyft. They get their little premiums. They get their little pennies out of every transaction. Uber wants you to get in there. Hey, we have a trip for you. Doesn't matter where it takes you. You're going to accept. Take it and leave, right? And the smarter ones start cherry picking in or, in or around the airport, in the queue, outside the queue. You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? All I say is be a little bit more careful because being cut off from your moneymaker, being cut off from pickups and drop-offs at an airport is going to set you back more than 50%, right? Now, best opportunity, of course, if you want to talk, um, start getting your licenses in your state and say, okay, I'm going to play this game until I'm going to get caught. Somewhere down the line, they're going to deactivate me. Oh, but guess what? I've already, I've already recruited 20, 30, 40, 50 private clients. I already have my state licensing. Nobody can stop you. You can go in and out that airport as you wish. You can drop off. You can pick up as a private driver as you wish. The moment the companies are in between you and the airport, 
It's all them trying to take control, behave, do it our way, accept this trip, accept this trip, right? And um, all I can say to even the veteran, even the smartest drivers out there, listen, I leased out 58 SUVs. I saw every little story, every little bit of data, every little letter, every little complaint, every screenshot that Uber and Lyft could have possibly sent these 58 drivers. And you learn, right? And you quickly figure out that guy's not going to last long. He's not going to last long. He's going to stay forever, right? So just please work smart when it comes to airports. Don't think that you are smarter than the company. They have so much data. They're analyzing that data, right? They know if you're in the queue or outside the queue. They know it. And then sooner and later, you start getting the warnings. That is the, at that time, I say to myself, hey, I'm getting these warnings, final notice, maybe I need to stop, right? Because they'll hammer me on one of these five. Now, support abuse. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you some good advice, right? And, and, and I was actually guilty of this. I would hammer support. I would get so effing angry with support, right? And that is phone support. I would always try to escalate it to a manager or support at a hub. I would never take their shit. I would give them hell. I would go off on them, right? But at the end of the day, it takes one arsehole at a, at a hub. It takes one arsehole at support, right? Who says, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put up this guy. I'm going to put you in a time, time out a temporary hold. Let him just sit there until a review team or a specialized team, you know. So I'm basically going to deactivate you right here and now. They don't allow, they don't like this support abuse. If you start shouting at them, listen, I don't effing understand you, your accent, you know, you don't know what's going on here in this country, you're not boots on the ground, you don't understand, you're talking shit, you're talking out of here. Don't give them attitude. That little guy on the phone, that little guy at the front desk at the hub, has a lot of power. I realized that, right? Took five or six security guards to march me out of the hub because I started getting vocal. And I was right. I was right. But because I spoke up, right? Because I was vocal and I spoke up. Boom. Five security on me, out. So getting into a spat, getting into a fight with support at the end of the day, you might get away with it. But do that four or five times, you deactivate it. They take the notes. So I'm trying to give you little, little, little pieces of information here that could maybe help you, could keep you out of trouble if you start getting these final notices. Now, we've gone through GPS manipulation. We've gone through disabling your location. We've gone through illeg illegitimate cancellations, which I say don't exist. There's no such thing as an illegitimate cancellation. You as an independent contractor, should be able to accept and cancel as you wish. That verbiage there should not be in there. And that should not be the reason if they deactivate you. But because you get deactivated, right? Because you are not dancing to their tune. Because you are not drumming to their beat, right? They will kick you off the platform. Now, all remaining, the last, the fifth one, all remaining online in the queue for reasons other than accepting trips at an airport. Let me repeat that. Or remaining online in the queue for, uh, for reasons other than accepting trips at an airport. Now, if you are in the queue at an airport, you're in this queue, next one up, next one up, next one up, here's my trip, off I go. That's the way they would like it, right? If there's 100 cars on the lot, you're in a queuing system, you might sit there for 45 minutes, you might sit there for one and a half hours. Oops, here comes my trip, off I go. Now, if for some reason you say, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on staying in that queue. I'm going to stay longer because I'm not going to go. I've been sitting here for 45 minutes, an hour. I'm not going to go on a $5 trip. And you're actually preoccupying, you're occupying the queue, the airport lot longer than they want you to. They punish you, right? So take that into consideration, ladies and gentlemen, right? The only thing at Gig Rocket I would not be able to help you with, my team, 
the attorneys, the paralegals that I work with is GPS manipulation. And man, do I know the players who do it? And man, is it real? Yes, it is real, right? And does Uber or do Uber and Lyft know that GPS manipulation exists? Don't pretend, dear driver. Don't pre pretend you're smarter than them when it comes to GPS manipulation. I talk to a lot of these guys at the airport, at the lots. I ask a lot of questions to the people that operate it and to the people that actually go and make money there, right? Every single number plate at any given time is known. They've got that data, right? Because as you drive on that lot, everything is registered. The vehicle, they don't want anything to go wrong. Safety-wise, security-wise, they want it to flow. The airport wants it to flow. The planes are landing, the passengers, passengers are getting out. Taxis need to pick them up. Uber needs to pick them up. Shuttle needs to pick them up. It needs to flow. There cannot be any backlog, right? So any airport management anywhere around the world wants a smooth, seamless transition. So what they say to Uber and Lyft, here's your, here's your regulations, dear taxi drivers. This is how you have to do it, shuttles. These are the laws that you have to abide by, Uber and Lyft, at our airport. These are the fees that you're going to pay. And make sure you have systems in place to keep your drivers accountable because they have all the data going in that airport, leaving the airport. There is so much security, so many cameras at these airports, outside the airports, at the lots, at the taxi lots. They watch it like a hawk. So if you want to play the game, make sure you are damn smart. Right, damn smart. Which now, you saw me a few days ago, I spoke about dash cams, right? And I want, honestly would ask every driver out there, every food delivery driver out there, do me a favor, right? If you want to buy an inexpensive dash cam, or if you want to buy a little bit of a high-end N4 Pro, or if you want a dash cam that uploads to the cloud, get yourself a dash cam, right? Because the difference between life and death could be a dash cam. And what I've always said, going years and years back, put those stickers out there. Hey, you are being recorded. Check your state laws. Make sure you're in compliance. Can you or can you not record that individual? Put the stickers there. The stickers are on Amazon. Put them everywhere so that the person that's getting into the car before they even open the door and get inside, they know that whatever bullshit they try in your office, in your car, in your four wheels, they are being monitored. And pay attention to the ones that say, hey, I see you record. Is that true? Are you recording me? If a person already mentions that they worry to be recorded, then you've got to be a little bit on the alert. Now, what Uber wants you to do and Lyft wants you to do is say, hey, you know what? Get yourself a dash cam, register it with us. We will notify the rider that you, the driver, have a dash cam. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is a good thing, right? And don't get me wrong. That is a good thing that the rider gets notified. Hey, this driver has a dash cam registered with us. That's a good thing, right? But where it gets really, really, really tricky and what you want to make 100% sure that you read the legalities. What are you agreeing to? What are you signing off when you register that dash cam with Uber, right? Yes, they probably can't. I said that they can spy on you in the car. They'll spy on you through your phone. They can see how fast you're driving. They get, they, they get all the data from the navigation. They, they, they can't, if you have a, a chip or a disc in there, they can't obviously access and, and, and follow you and track you in the car and watch what you're doing, right? But if it's uploaded to a cloud, who knows what information they can get from the cloud, right? They could get that information from the person that supplies the camera or the cloud services. But here's where it gets tricky with the dash cam. When you register it with them, right? Hey, I'm a driver. I, 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 want, you, I want you to know that I have a dash cam. They then alert the riders. Good, the rider knows there's a dash cam in your car. What happens if things go south, right? If you get into an accident, if there's a stabbing, there's a murder, a shooting, or whatever, a fight, or whatever, right? You are not allowed 
to share that footage with the outside world. You're basically signing off and saying they control that footage, right? And if you were to use that footage against them, everything is in the legal language. All I can say is go make 100% sure you go and read those 10 pages of the legal language when you register a dash cam. That is why I advise do not register a dash cam with Uber or Lyft, but have one in your car and alert every rider and passenger big time, right? No smoking, you being recorded, audio, blah, 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 cameras in the car. Put them on the outside, put them on the inside of the car, double up, outside, inside, so that they know we cannot pull shit in this car are being recorded, right? Even better, there should be a sticker. Um, 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 I, I have a dash cam in the car and the entire trip is uploaded to a cloud so that they know, okay, they can't steal the dash cam or try and shoot the driver, steal the dash cam and go, many have tried, right? It's too late if it's uploaded into a cloud. And again, I, I say this display ride is the best of the best when it comes to dash cams with clouds. Now, back to this. If you get these warnings, right, and they're hitting you with four or five possibilities, if you know which one of those five you continuously violate, right, again, with the exception of illegitimate cancellations, you can fight it all day long. Let them punish you, right, over illegitimate cancellations. That, that is the easiest thing to fight, right? Because when you appeal, like for example, at Gig Rocket, you'll find the link below. When you're appealing your wrongful deactivation, you say, hey, what are the reasons you're actually deactivating this guy? Oh, he, he engaged in repeat sexual harassment, dangerous one, difficult one to get out of, or he or she repeated in repetitive GPS manipulation, very difficult to get out of. He or she... Um, um, engaged in illegitimate cancellations, easy one to fight, right? Easy one to fight because you can escalate it up to small claims. You can ask for evidence. Um, easy one, easy ones um, to fight are if riders just make shit up about you. Oh, car smelt of marijuana. He was smoking marijuana. He was driving erratically. He was drunk. He was he was under the influence of of, of drugs. Those, those ones are easy to fight. Even the pet issue is easy to fight. But your job is to make sure you don't get into too much trouble that you get that final notice, that final notice, because being cut off from pickups and drop-offs at the airport cuts into your money, right? I would almost say being kicked out of an airport, sometimes two or three airports, right? If you're doing the shit at two or three airports and you're out out, if you've been kicked out of two or three airports and you can't do pickups and drop ups anymore. I mean, what good, what good is the job, right? You just, you just not making money. Money here is made at airports, but do it the smart way. Me, I would never sit in an airport queue. Never. I've learned the hard way back then, you know, sitting around waiting for a good one or a bad one, hit or miss, waste of my time. I'd rather know, okay, get out of the airport. Um, two, three, four miles down into Marina del Rey, hotels. I'm already working the Marriott or the Jamaica Bay uh, or the Killer Shrimp restaurant. Or, you know, that's where I'll make my money. But sitting in an airport queue for me is just actually the, 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 lazy, the lazy driver. Unless, of course, you're in a city with an airport. And listen to me carefully. I don't want to say the wrong things here. If you're in an airport which is way outside of the city. And the hustle and the bustle is 20, 30, 40 minutes away. All the hotels are downtown, for example. And you get these long ass trips. Sure, then it is worth sitting at an airport, right? But most airports, like even here LAX or Burbank in Los Angeles, it's a hit and miss. You could get a, you could get a decent trip. You could not get a decent trip. You could get a long trip. You could not, you could get a short trip, right? Why am I sitting there for 45, 60 minutes in a queue waiting for the unknown that's not going to pay? And this is where they manipulate the, you the most at airports. This is where they pay you the least at airports because they know they know they have the rider. Here they will jack up the price 
for the rider or the passenger to the maximum at the airport because they know he or she has arrived with their family and they need to get home. They need to get on and they will jack up the prices for the rider and the passenger at airports through the roof and say to the driver, this is what we have to offer you, take it. The biggest margins for these companies, the most control that they want to have is at airports. It's the numero uno, right? So the scammers I found out later, uh, what does it say? Scam the whole neighborhood selling solar panels. Okay. Uh, Mike Miller's in the house. Dom K is in the house. Luis Castillo is in the house. SB Rides is in the house. Jerry Rice is in the house. Uh, who do we else have in the house? We have Stoffel the Badger in the house. Um, yeah, please give us your feedback. You know, please share your feedback. Um, have you received these type of threats? Have you receive these type of warnings or final notices where you get four or five things thrown at you and you just don't know which one or maybe none of them. Maybe you haven't engaged in any of them and you're not guilty of any of those. So why are they warning me? My number one guess is this is to frighten you. It's, this is psychology, ladies and gentlemen. This is like, oh, you're canceling too much, right? So here we're going to throw a lot of big phrases at you, right? A lot of big phrases, GPS manipulation, disabling your location. But the one that we are watching, the one that we want to scare you with is the legitimate cancellations. Am I illegitimately canceling too much? Are they monitoring this? Is this my final notice? Will I get kicked off? Right. It's wrong. It's wrong if they are deactivating you over cancellations or, you know, having uh, an acceptance rate and you just don't have a 100% acceptance rate. You maybe have a 15% acceptance rate because you're cherry picking. So ladies and gentlemen, please share your input. We have 152 people in the house. Let's hit that freaking like button. As Dustin say, Smakovich, right? Smack that like button. I want to get it up at least 50. Thank you, 52, 53. Let's get it up there at least to 70. We have 152 cool people in the house. Jerry Rice says, I cannot drive anymore. And probably the reason you can't drive anymore is, is because they're just not paying you. And Dara Koshashawi, Logan Green, you're out. John Zimmer, you're out. New guy, David Risha, listen up. Tony Zhu, listen up. If you think that drivers are stupid, if you think that you can outsmart a driver, good luck. The driver always, always figures a way around your bullshit, right? Always. Drivers are way too smart. So here they are programming this, trying out this, this pilot project, this constantly trying out, constantly using threatening messages, constantly using, this is psychology. I have my master's in psychology, by the way. Right. I actually have my master's in psychology. So when I look at these type of messages, having worked in the South African Defense Force intelligence, just basically the same equivalent here as the, you know, the intelligence in the United States, right? Your rodeo in the house, right? I break it down like, what are they trying to say here? What are they trying to achieve? How are they trying to manipulate you? How are they trying to game you? How are they trying to get your attention in this one? They are trying to get you in, in, in attention by sending you a message. Stop those, and they call it illegitimate cancellations. There are no illegitimate cancellations as an independent contractor. You can cancel, cancel, accept as you wish. You are an independent contractor. You got Tony West, Dara Koshashawi, David Risha. You got to stop with these mind games. This is illegal what you're doing, and this is why it's costing you so much money. Because the moment you deactivate a driver because they are not doing 100% as you want to, right? You don't want them to cancel. You want them to take every trip and go, yes, amen. I will take. Yes, I will do. Yes, that's what they want. But you can cancel and you can accept as you wish. You can cherry pick. Why? Because you are an independent contractor. And if they deactivate, you come over to Gig Rocket. Check the link below. We will hammer them. We'll file the appeal, 
will go after the monies that you lose. Whether it's $2,000, $5,000, $15,000, $20,000, we'll go after them. And I have a message for you, David Risha. I have a message for you, uh, Tony Zhu and Dara Kosher Shawi. Stop playing games with drivers. A, we're too smart. We are too smart for you. We're way smarter than all these engineers that you bring in that are just typing away, right? Because we are like the little foot soldiers on the street. We think we understand the street language. We understand what you're trying to do with us, right? We understand the language. I will remind the drivers about this type of language all day long. Don't play this game with us. Be real, be honest, be ethical, pay well, and mark my words, ladies and gentlemen, Bolt, B-O-L-T, right? They cleaned up in Europe. They're doing an IPO now. They're getting ready for an IPO, right? They will be in America within the next six months. And I would not be surprised, ladies and gentlemen. Hubert Aaron's in the house. Thank you so, so much for throwing down Louis, uh, $2. Luis Castillo, thank you for throwing down $2, $2. Ladies and gentlemen, I would not be surprised in the six, next six months. I'm going to make a prediction that Bolt will be in the United States and will start cutting into Uber and Lyft's business. And if I can make another prediction, I think Bolt, the moment they have the IPO, is going to swallow Lyft, right? And appear in America as Bolt. They will take up every Lyft driver and say, hey, by the way, you are now a registered driver with Bolt. This is my prediction. This is my business prediction, right? So I see in the next six months, Lyft being acquired by Bolt, Bolt doing the IPO, raising enough money, and then getting into this market. This is why Dara Koshishawi is pushing with autonomous vehicles. This is why they're pushing these driverless cars, because they know other companies are going to start pissing on their turf. They know that other companies are on their heels and coming in, right? And again, I do want to give a shout out. If you're in San Francisco, this is a shout out. There's the phone number down there, 415 9920061 Thursday, 7.13th at 9.30 a.m. Dom K, I appreciate you. Torsen, can you add your uh, can you and your attorney reply to me for the Uber deactivation gig rocket? Okay. Dom, you need to move into the next phase, right? If you follow the, the steps one, two, and three, you need to move into the small claims phase. I've said that to you before. Why are you waiting, right? If a company does not want to reactivate you, it's usually because they know there are uh, multiple violations, multiple warnings against a driver, and they don't have to act. So you have to force them to act. You have to file the papers with the AAA, the American Arbitration Association. You have to file the papers with the small clans and you have to hit them with a dollar amount damages. So Dom, I really need you to finish that final step, right? And I've said it to you. Now, you come back to me and say, hey, you are to, we, we don't do the small claims. If, if you need an attorney, and attorneys charge way too much. It's five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. They'll want a retainer. Don't go that route. And small claims is designed for you, the individual. We'll get you the paper. We'll get you the paperwork, the right forms, show you how it's done. You bring your evidence. You go in. You get a court date. I have another guy who has another. Just sent me, hey, my court date is on August the 4th. And then you set yourself up to negotiate with the company directly. They do not want to pay you damages. They will negotiate, negotiate your account back. So, Dom, I need you to do that, right? Don't always try and blame or push elsewhere, oh God, you could do this. No, if you need an attorney to do for that, then start writing a $5,000 check to an attorney. None, no attorneys work for free. But small claims is designed for you, the driver. You have so much power as a driver in small claims. So much power. Texas, you can sue up to 20,000, right? And New York, up to 10,000. California, up to 10,000. Philadelphia, you can sue up to 12,000. Kentucky, unfortunately, only 5,000. So check out what is the limit I can sue for as an individual, as a driver in small claims? Package up the papers, usually called a summons, uh, file it, get your court date, send it to the company, right? And say, hey, I need you to appear mid of August at this thing because you owe me $8,000, right? You have the power. Why go and write an attorney a $5,000 or $10,000 retainer check? You don't have to do that. Now, unless you are suing for three, four, five hundred thousand dollars, 
because you got stabbed in the car, you have hospital fees, you got traumatized, you got PTSD. Yeah, then you go and get yourself a big civil attorney, maybe even a criminal attorney, right? And you go after them. But the, the, the deactivations, reactivations, you can fight with the appeal. The appeal sets you up for the damages. In the appeal, it says, if you do not act, I will come after you for money, right? So follow those one, two, three basic steps. Get reactivated, get your money. I can, I've done it 2,300 times. Now, self-driving future, right? Self-driving future. What is this? What is um, Edward Escobar calling for? In San Francisco on Thursday, 7.13, just around the corner at 9.30 a.m. So 13th of July, 9.30 a.m. at CPUC San Francisco. It's on Van Ness and McAllister. There it is, and there's the phone number, right? So if you want to go back to this part. Now, what are the, what are the drivers here? What are the taxi drivers and Uber drivers protesting? They're protesting in San Francisco that these guys are giving licenses for self-driving cars, for autonomous vehicles, to replace humans. That's the bullshit. So somebody is being paid in the political system to allow driverless cars. Now, I've made those videos about Waymo. I, I have no time for Waymo. It's a bunch of rubbish, right? It is a bunch of rubbish, those Waymo cars, right? But this is exactly what... Um, this is exactly why there are so many massive job losses because they're pushing for autonomous cars. So if you want to stand up in San Francisco, join that one. Shout out to Ed with the phone numbers below. There you have the details. Please do it. Please fight these autonomous vehicles. They're taking away our jobs. Hey. Richard's in the house. Richard says, uh, Torsen, can you warn about the scam that is going on, like the one in Lyft? They can call you. It's almost the same. Okay, good, Richard. I actually, Richard, it's really, really good that you brought it up and I should make a separate video, right? Because I know exactly what you're talking about. There's this massive, massive scam going on with Lyft right now and we have to be careful, right? So the one thing is, it really looks like a legitimate um, authorized number is calling you. Rule number one, Uber and Lyft never call you. Right, let me say that again. Uber and Lyft never call you. The only time you will get an email or a call from Uber and Lyft is if you are in a lawsuit against them or in a class action, or no, not actually a class action because you're represented, but if you file the small claims or you filed an arbitration, you will be dealing with a paralegal or with an attorney. That's the only time you will get a 415 call from San Francisco is because they maybe want to negotiate or settle with you and they will reference that case. That's the only, only time you will ever, ever get a call from Uber or Lyft, right? So for example, I'm going back and forth with David Risha and the legal team trying to get a settlement because I sued them for, I think, $650,000, right? going back and forth. I will get paid and I know they will pay me because they know that they want to minim minimize the damages with the rideshare professor because they know the rideshare professor costs them millions and millions of dollars, right? So yeah, that is the only time I would get an email or a phone call is because I'm either dealing with them on executive level or on, on, on attorney level. You will never ever get a call from support. And the reason, the reason why people are falling for this bullshit, ladies and gentlemen, right? For this bullshit here. Here it is. These are the things that people are falling for. Let me read this to you. Hello, my name is Sarah. I work in the support division of Lyft. All looks legitimate. Comes, it says it's an authenticated number. This trip is for VIPs. There is no message coming from them saying this. This trip is for VIPs, right? Pull over and send your phone number and driver's license to prove your identification. Ain't happening. That's when I write F off, right? Once the trip has been verified as completed, you will receive a $100 bonus. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a scam. Let me show you another one. If you want to just look out for this type of verbiage, right? And then once, by the way, once they're in, right? Once they're in, once you have given them 
your, um, your, 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 your details, your driver's license. Look out for this. Little transactions, one after the other. $5, $5, $5, right? All of these little transactions, latest transactions, money going out of your account. Be aware. The next one, load of bullshit, right? This trip is for an officer in the army. This trip is for an officer in the army. Uh, we can't share his information without verification. Please send your phone number and driver's license number to confirm the trip. Price is $250. And you'll never ever see a dollar sign behind a figure. Dollar sign is always in front. So you know this is some uneducated fool overseas trying to pull a fast one. Again, ladies and gentlemen, every driver, new or veteran, Uber and Lyft, never ever contact you directly unless you have sued them and you are dealing directly with their attorneys. Then you might be emailing back and forth, right? It would be an authentic Uber or Lyft email address, no fabrication address. And it's the only time you will ever interact with the company. No support will ever, ever call you, right? So don't fall for these cheap scams. Now there's another scam going out, a very sophisticated one. Uh, to explain that here, um, in the video it would take a little long. I think I should do a standalone video just on that scam. There's a new scam going on with Uber and Lyft. Let's talk about it. But again, rule rule number one: they ain't calling you. They ain't calling you. We're on 82 likes. I need you to smash por favor. Smash the like button. Smakovich, as Dustin would always say, hit that with a Smakovich. 82, let's get it. I want to get up to 100. We're on 85. Thank you. We're 157 people in the house. So I talk with Uber and Lyft over the phone, but I make the call. Of course, you make the call. You contacting their support. You are initiating. They do not phone you randomly on your 310 or your 480 number. You call them. They don't call you, right? Now, let's see what else we have here. Devo Meister, never had any problems. Richard says, I got an Uber Eats who really called me. Was the same person that ordered the food since it will appear was Uber. They tell you to cancel the order and ask for your phone, right? Don't give them your phone. Don't give out any PIN. Don't give out any driver's license. Don't give out any bank info. No, no, no. Nyet, nyet, nyet. Nine, nine, nine. Absolute nicht, right? Don't give out. Dom says, oh, I never heard of Para. Para is good. 504 Doc, they called me when a rider said I wasn't who was on the profile. I, 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 you know, I don't think they call you. David Sink, thumbs up. Uh, Kent is in the house. Wendell is in the house. And Wendell said, that happened to me before. I told them to go kick rocks. Be a little bit more vocal. Tell them to shudder. Tell them to go and drown in a deep, cold lake, right? Um, Unite One. Close call music's in the house. We've got a lot of people in the house today. Welcome you all, right? I hope you all had a great 4th of July and a long holiday. We have 100, 100 likes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you all. I really do. I appreciate you. So Abstract Echo is in the house. Luis Castillo is in the house. Everyone's in the house. Um, I had an amazing few days chilling, relaxing with the kids, um, pulling them behind the boat. Uh, there you can see it was, just, it was just amazing. Fishing, caught a baby little trout, good food, uh, wine, a lot of wine, poured myself a lot of rum and cokes. Uh, went for walks in the forest. Um, absolutely beautiful, right? There's me with a fam at the waterfalls, hiking. You got to do this once in a while. You got to recharge, right? You got to recharge. But back to this, ladies and gentlemen. Your account will be deactivated. That's a threat, right? Final notice. Final notice. You do any of these one more time. We will castrate you. We will cut off your balls. 
We will cut off your testicles. We will remove your ovaries. If you do any of these, it's like a threat. Here. Swivel. Spin. Rotate. Daryl Koshishawi and the rest of those thugs. If this illegitimate activity continues, they're not telling you what, they're not telling you which one, but if this illegitimate activity continues, your account will be deactivated. Now, surprise, surprise. Let us give you a list of illegal activities that you can choose from, right? It'll either be any of these illegitimate activities are consistent or are inconsistent with Uber's policies and or terms and conditions. So any of these I'm going to name right now violate our terms and you will be deactivated. Threat, threat, threat. We will cut off your testicles. We will remove your ovaries. We will cut off your balls, right? If you do commit any of these sins, which are, this may include GPS manipulation or disabling your location, illegitimate cancellations, support abuse. You are abusing our support, right? You are contacting our support over and over and over again. How dare you call our support? Or remaining online in the queue for reasons other than accepting trips at an airport. As a result, here is the punishment. This is how we will cut off your balls. This is how we will remove your testicles. This is how we will remove your ovaries. If you continue these activities, you are no longer eligible to receive requests for pickups and drop-offs at airports. So this person is on the radar and by the way is deactivated now because they continued. They continued to violate one of these. What worries me, what worries me is the subliminal little hidden message here which says illegitimate cancellations. And I want to remind those CEOs, I want to remind all those trash executives, right? A, stop threatening us, right? Because we're way smarter than you or your engineers will ever be, right? And start treating us as independent contractors. If you call us independent contractors, make damn sure you treat us as an independent contractor. Because I need to remind these trash executives, what is an independent contractor? An independent contractor makes independent decisions. Do I drive for that price? Should I set my own price? Do I go to that location? Do I cancel? Do I accept? We make independent decisions. How dare you? How dare you threaten drivers by putting in this language, the subliminal bullshit here, saying that they may be involved. This, is, ladies and gentlemen, is about illegitimate cancellation. This is your cancellation is too high. We are sending you a message. If you do not abide, final notice, final notice, final notice, final notice, naughty boy, final notice, naughty girl, we will cut you off, right? They want you to continue dancing to their rhythm. They drum, have the drum beat. You are supposed to just Follow suit. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I will accept whatever you offer me. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I will not cancel. I will accept. I will not cancel. I will. I will. Um, I will accept. I will not cancel. I will accept. Cut it. Ladies and gentlemen, you independent contractors, fight back. Take them to court. Small claims. We will show you how to get at Gig Rocket, how to get paid. It's a nice feeling when you get a $12,000 or a $20,000 check because they effed around with you, right? All day long, my friends at Uber and Lyft, all day long, your attorneys know who I am. Not afraid, and I will run up your bill into the millions. I already have, and I'll continue doing so because one person that does not take or swallow their shit is me. I don't take this abuse. We fight back. That's why I formed these bodies. David Singh says, Darrow, we know you're watching. Do the right thing. Exactly. Dara, you or your wife or whoever it is you're watching, do the right thing for drivers. Stop this bullshit, right? Stop stealing. Stop conniving. Stop baiting and switching. Start running an ethical company. That's why I want to give a warning to Dara Koshashawi. Wait till the CEO of Bolt arrives, right? Wait. He is going to kick Uber's and Lyft's ass. The CEO of Bolt. He's been doing it methodically, the European way, very methodically. Now they go for the IPO. Mark my words. 
Within the next six to 12 months, they're in the United States and they're kicking Uber and Lyft's ass, right? So Dara Koshishawi, all those executives, all, those, all that trash that is manipulating you, paying these engineers to screw us over, enjoy your little ride. It ain't gonna last long because there's a new sheriff in town called Bolt coming very, very soon, right? We need players. We need players in the arena. We need competition. We need stiff competition from the outside. There cannot just be two dominating parties, Uber and Lyft. Unacceptable, right? Bolt, look, it, it, the only way that Bolt, and you know, I've, I've gone back and forth with the executives at Bolt in the past, but the only way that Bolt wins this game in the United States is to pay the driver better, to have better rewards and better safety, right? They know that. They know the weaknesses. Ladies and gentlemen, Bolt knows Ubers and Lyft's weakness. And they know that the biggest weakness of Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and these others is the way they treat their riders, the way they treat their customers, the way they treat their drivers. So you start being better, going one better, going one better, going one better, you already start getting the up end. Oh, I'm gonna drive for Bolt because I'm making a little bit more here. Even if it's just a little bit more money, we follow the money. Now show us the money. Show us the money and we will follow. Show us that you care about us, right? Show us, Bolt. Show us that you want to keep us safe. Show us that you have mechanisms in place to not le let every arsehole, thug, criminal, pedophile carjack in our car. Show us, Bolt, that you are better than Uber and Lyft and we will join you, right? It's not difficult coming in as an outsider from Europe called Bolt. A, maybe swallowing Lyft, right? Because they're worth shit. They're worth nine or ten dollars, right? Swallowing them and then going up against Uber. Dara Koshoshawi, I think, dreads that day. It's coming. Mark my words, Bolt is coming. We need change. We deserve change. We deserve to earn more. We deserve to be paid our value, ladies and gentlemen, right? We are valuable. We are essential. Pay us. We are important. Keep us safe. Right, we do have rights, treat us that way. Don't try and write all this bullshit and, and, and come with all your legal subliminal bullshit threatening language to try and scare the people and subdue them. We're better than that. We're smarter than you, right? Mark is in the house. I heard eight to 10% cancellation rate, they start bothering us. 100%, you're right. Mark, you are right. You get into that. Five to 15% acceptance. Oh, this guy's conducting too much cherry picking. The threats will come, right? The threats will come. The only thing I really would ask you to be careful on is GPS manipulation. I know many drivers, no names mentioned. I know which groups, I know where they are. I know who's doing this, but eventually it bites them in the ass. Now, you don't have to worry about GPS manipulation. You do not have to worry about illegitimate cancellations if you are a private driver. You, your car, your terms, your rates, your times, your LLC, your S corporation, right? So I always encourage people, become a private driver. I've shown you how to take clients away from these companies, right? You gotta set yourself up in case they do deactivate you, you gotta have plan B. Plan B is actually investing in yourself, setting up your company, getting the state license, getting the commercial, invest in your future, invest in yourself, right? Just in the last few weeks, we probably signed up four or 500 people and put them through the private course, right? Showed them how to start recruiting their own clients. I showed you the other day, right? When I got, I think it was 150 or 100, it was $150 I got from that client. I, I completed my 50th private trip. So it means I got 7,500 from their one private client. Where did I get them from? Thank you, I got them from Uber, right? They used to be an Uber client and then they got sick and tired of Uber and then I started driving them. They got a reliable driver, better rates, better service, everything, right? And I made $7,500. But if I would have had to take that $150 fare from the airport back to Calabasas, which I completed, right? Oh, sorry, it was from Calabasas to Alix. If I had taken that 150, and if I would have had to share that with Uber, it would have been 50 for me, 100 for Uber, 
right? I would have been left with $50 out of the 150. Then I still have to figure out, okay, I'm paying at least another 15 to $20 for my Cadillac for gas. I'm left with 30 bucks. That is not money, ladies and gentlemen, right? As a private driver, you're putting 100% of the proceeds. You do not have to worry as a private driver about all these threats. You can do as many pickups and drop-offs and schedule trips. In fact, I'm on my way right now. I need to stop right now and hustle, hustle, race over to the airport because I have a private client, right? I have, I have a private client. Anybody down there at 9.30, hit me up. I'll get you coffee or whatever. I'll get you a meal. I'll be at the airport. I've got to I really watch the clock. At 9.30, I'm picking up the next client. God bless you all. Hit the like button on the way out. Smash it hard. Gracias. Thank you. Spasiba. Merci. Danke. Danke schön. Uh, obrigado. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe and be careful when you get these type of messages. Be smart, right? Be one better than these assholes. Thank you and stay well, my friends. And if you can on the way out, just light up the whole screen with cherries. I love cherries, right? So hit it up with cherries. My friends, be safe out there, right? Without your safety, there's no money, right? Be safe. Oh yeah, plus the $5 coffee, 100%. I mean, I got, third, I got $14 in donations, so I can go and buy myself two coffees right now. Hope this is a cherry. That is a cherry, Luis Castillo. Have a good one, my friends. Stay safe. Oh, there we go. There's the cherry. Cherry time, cherry picking time. Take care of yourself, know your worth. Know when it's worth driving. Know when it's worth saying no. Know when you should accept. Know when you need to cancel. And I want to remind everyone, and I want to especially remind all those trash executives, we are independent contractors. Allow us, allow us to make independent decisions for us that make sense for us, the driver. Have a good one. Good night. Much love.